by helping and kind of what Jesse's saying is if you can support her more to find a man. Shut the f*** up. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm 36 years old. Okay. My oh. entire life okay. has been support. You want me to be doing this in front of the I want to do it in front of everybody. I want, I want, I'm just tired. I, I, I am 36 years old. Stop treating me like I'm a kid. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay. You raised me to be just a subservient person to you. It looks like Colt the Goat is going after Ed and his own mother. Awesome! Congrats, everyone. We made it to another tell-all. <laughs> what? What, please? The cast is on their way, with Debbie being one of the first to arrive. I am really excited to be here today. And Debbie starts out her first interview with a lie. How are things with Colt and Vanilla? They seem to be very happy, and uh, their marriage is good. Liar! How do you feel about seeing Ed again? He's a sitting duck. I mean, I, everything about him is just, like, pathetic. And we want her to call him out again like last time. You think you're too close? You don't know shit. I know this. So shut up. <laughs> you have no right to give advice, dude. You are about the lowest life. Yes, let's see more of that. Colt and Vanessa arrive, and I expected them to be here to support Debbie's journey. But they are actually here to call her out on some issues. Uh-oh. We want to start by checking in with Debbie. Sean talks about how Debbie hit the dating scene this season with her new makeover, and she definitely has had a glow up. Hey, Debbie, I, I, I think me and you should go on a date if you're kind of looking like that, you know? <laughs> well, Sinjin, you wouldn't have to worry about Debbie wanting kids. You just have to deal with her 36-year-old toddler. Colt and his wife Vanessa live with Debbie and have stood by her during all her dating ups and downs. Colt and Vanessa enter the tell-all, and they don't think Debbie tried hard enough to go on dates. Pretty awesome when she's still single. I'm willing to go on a date. <laughs> <laughs> and Debbie denies Sinjin because she thinks he's too young. I'm glad she dates people closer to her age, unlike some people we know. After watching a clip of the argument they had on the way to San Diego, Colt expresses his frustration with Debbie. I'm, I'm, I'm upset that you just can't do anything by yourself. He says he's tired of being Debbie's go-to person all of the time. Okay. You've raised me to be just a subservient person to you. They have always had a weird codependent relationship, and they shouldn't rely so much on each other. But it only seems like Colt recently had this issue now that three is a crowd. Colt's example is that he didn't want to drive Debbie to San Diego. My wife was pregnant. I, I didn't want to tell you at the time when I was driving out to San Diego. I didn't want to leave her. So why didn't he just say no and tell her that? Put on your big boy pants and say no, Colt. You want me to be- Are we doing this in front of the I want to do it in front of everybody. I want, I want, I'm just tired. I, I am 36 years old. Stop treating me like I'm a kid. I never heard him complain like this when his mom did everything for him. My mother cooks for me, does my laundry and whatever, and she will drive me to work and pick me up. You could say I'm a bit of a mommy's boy. Debbie storms out and Sean wants to know how this situation has affected Colt and Vanessa's relationship. I moved out. We're I'm separated. Just... And the breaking point was when Vanessa suffered a miscarriage, which in all seriousness is sad. They yeah. took me to the emergency room in the middle of the night. And um, that was that. <laughs> it's okay. Jesse is human for five whole seconds and says he's sorry for their loss and asks if Debbie dating has helped the dependency situation. And then Ed chimes in for some reason. By helping and kind of what Jesse's saying is, if you can support her more to find a man. Shut the f*** up. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm 36 years old. Okay. My oh. entire life okay. has been support. Okay, Why calm down. shut the f*** up, you fake piece of <laughs> I don't normally agree with Colt, but um, he's not wrong. Backstage, Debbie is still upset. The thing is, he can't even fucking afford to live there. He doesn't even have a job. She doesn't have a job. No. I'm paying all the f***ing bills. So if that is really the case, why do they look at apartments for her? Why don't they just move out and let her live in that house? I don't get it. Let me know what you think about this. Debbie rejoins the cast and tries to kick out Colt. You come here and embarrass me and try to treat me like shit? I'm, I'm done, dude, go. Vanessa blames a lot of their stress on their living situation with Debbie, but Debbie says they could have moved out whenever they wanted. I said we're moving out, you have a freak out. You made me feel so bad, I, I apologize to you. Because I said, Vanessa and I moving out in 90 days. She did freak out, and I don't think she wants to be alone. But they are adults, so why don't they just do it and move out? I feel like we're missing some information or something, or Colt really doesn't want to move out. Will you move back in if Debbie is not in the house? Yeah. We knew there was tension, but I didn't know it was bad enough to cause Colt and Vanessa to separate. We're done. I'm, I'm done. 
I really wanted to know what happened with Bill, but we just end our segment with her and Vanessa arguing. He does. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. Big Ed, how about we bring out your fiance? Ugh, do we have to? Liz walks out and gives Ed a weird kiss. Sean congratulates them on their engagement. And Liz sounds excited? Ugh. I'm in love. Yeah, I'm in love too. I mean, how can you not be head over heels for this? I was sleeping and I was tooting. Oh, my gosh. Hey, why are you laughing? After the um, bloodbath, I mean, the last tell-all, um, <laughs> um, we, bro- we were broken up for six months. Ed says losing Teddy brought them back together. He woke up the first night back together, and I said, are you my forever? He says he went and bought the biggest engagement ring he could find. In my last Big Ed video, I thought the ring he gave Liz was actually one he bought for Kyori, and I wanted to know what my subscribers thought. Most also thought it was a ring Ed already had, and apparently even Liz herself wondered this. I was like, well, I don't know if this ring is for me or if it was a leftover ring and you're safe for another girl. Ed showed her receipts and a purchase date to prove that the ring was for her. Their relationship is so toxic that she actually had to ask for the proof. I realized he realized that how his so-called friends were using him. I am making the same face. Anytime he broke up with me, it wasn't him messaging me. It was somebody else writing it for me. Yeah. Ed might not have a neck, but he definitely has thumbs to text with. Because I'm not that, my grammar, I'm not that smart. Oh, was another like, guy? You're damn right you're not that smart. What the f***, Ed? He was out sniffing around for somebody that would appreciate him and say yes. The only reason he wasn't with those women is because they turned him down. I mean, that's true. Me and Kyori both ghosted him. He came back crying, and he gave her the biggest gift he could think of, and that is an engagement. There it's basically go. a bribe. That was really rude. Fart girl and her boob could not be more right. How soon after you got back together did you propose? Two days. Two days. Uh, Two days. Oh, my God. (laughs) Liz says people change, and I guess that's true, since she changed her mind about that leaked phone call. She tried to cancel him on the Internet. She was mad. And she keeps saying that they're doing so much better since they removed certain people out of their lives, including Ed's mom, Norma. Did you say, Mom, Liz is going to move in, so you got to move out? No, no, no. no. She was already in the process of moving out. Since she didn't approve of the engagement, I think they made her move out. Also, none of Ed's family wanted to be on the tell-all, and only Ed's friend Rich participates. Why do you think Norma is not happy about their engagement? Rich says there was absolutely no warning, and we all know that Ed would have proposed to this pet rock if Liz didn't get there first. The bomb was dropped on us in the matter of one day. After Ed's daughter found out, she called everyone, and no one was happy about it. Oh. Sign a prenup. Oh. Tiffany said the same thing. Will you guys have a prenup if you no get way. I'm no. willing 100% no way. to do not. it. Apparently, Ed doesn't believe in prenups, and Sean asks Rich if Ed and Liz are good together. I think they're actually meant for each other, honestly. Oh, oh. shit. That was... <laughs> he says they are both insecure and selfish, and he even calls Ed desperate. Ooh, we like Rich. No offense, this is the author of all of our breakup texts. So Rich is the person who forced Ed to break up with Liz via text, and Ed had no power to stop him. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Would you go through with the wedding if none of your family members attended? Absolutely. What? This entire thing just keeps getting more immature and weird. And even backstage, people are fighting like teenagers. Like when Liz overhears Natalie talking about Liz not signing a prenup. Don't think that I'm using him because I'm not the one that has a problem signing the prenup. I can't sign it if he doesn't draft it. Why don't you use your ears? Liz tells on Natalie to Ed. You did good. Yeah, well, at least I don't fucking filter my brain hey. like she does. Jesse Meester wants to remind you to subscribe to this channel. If you don't, he will appear in your room tonight and give you a motivational speech for three whole hours. It is an illusion. We move on to Sinjin. It's your turn. Yeah. Yay! And Tanya has arrived pissed off. It is not Sinjin's single life journey. This is the journey of our separation. Everyone's seen us from engaged to married to living together. And now it's our separation. Cool. Let's just rename the show right now just for you. Please welcome Tanya. Sean wants to know if either of them regret the choice to break up. And it was becoming very toxic, so I actually think we we called it off at the right time. Yeah. We find out that they no longer have a physical relationship and plan to get divorced. Oh yeah, and Tanya is getting into selling pictures of her feet. Look at Stephanie, she bought a really nice house. Stephanie, 
So last year, I became a millionaire. If you didn't know this, she made money from selling jars of farts. And speaking of Stephanie, she says that she lost her celibacy. Not that anyone really cares. I met someone online. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. We talked for several months, and I flew to Paris. For a minute, I thought she was talking about your wet sock, but she says later that the guy is French. It was pretty crazy. I mean, we met after talking for several months, and within an hour at the hotel, we were in the shower having some she goes into a lot of detail that I can't show, but at this point, she just seems to be acting to get people to subscribe to her OnlyFans. What is the craziest thing that he has suggested? I don't even think I can, like, say it on television. Oh, good. <laughs> you can. <laughs> well, you can't say it on YouTube. If you want to hear her talk more about it, you will have to watch the tell-all on Discovery+. Plus. want to move over now to Jesse and Jennifer, who made history as the very first pair from different seasons of 90 Day to start a relationship. Please hold while they make out unnecessarily. Sean asks them how they are doing, and we get a long, boring answer that I shortened for you. He's perfect for me, and it's scary, but it was beautiful. Yeah. True. I think it's lovely. Like, beautiful. I'm, I'm rooting for them. Yes, it's great to see two narcissists getting together. I like, I, I can wait to, to see in the future, you know, a mix between Jesse, a little oh, Jesse and Jen. Yeah. Like. Oh, please, God, no. Even Sean gets bored of Jesse and Jennifer, so she brings on Kakwa. Kakwa, what do you think of Jesse's personality? Bueno, pienso que es una persona un poco fría, calculadora. No one likes Jesse, and it's funny. It's clear for me. I don't see love from his side. Ha ha. Jesse, what was your reaction to Kakwa saying Jennifer was the best sexual partner he'd ever had? We all just want to know if you guys actually did it or not. And Tanya even asked directly if there was sex or not. We still don't get a direct answer. The fact that they're playing games and dancing yeah. around the question, it's an admission that something happened. They don't want to, and that's, and I respect him. Jesse says he trusts Jennifer, but he doesn't trust Kakwa. Uh, I'm, I'm a little shocked that Kakwa, as a good friend that he says he is, tells her, I'll be there for you when you break up. Why do you say that? But again, we get no real answer. But their segment gets a lot more interesting when Tim and Veronica join the tell-all. Whatever, whatever. We just don't deserve to be here in our show. This is exactly. about our love. There's no place for you here. And this is the first time we start to see any real reactions from Jesse especially when they show a throwback clip of Tim talking about Jesse. Yeah, I don't know. He just got that, like, used car salesman vibe about him, just like a shyster. And he better have a big wallet to Ooh. keep her happy. Look at that bubbling rage. Hey, listen, don't they suspect my woman like that. Watch out, Tim. He might virtually throw his celery juice. What is it about Jesse that you feel is inauthentic? Everything. And the fighting continues into part two. You know what? You don't even deserve to be called a because you love to act like a little bitch. Whoa! And also in part two, we hear from Tanya's mom. Uh, I'm not saying anything about all those things. Oh, wait, so you asked to borrow for... money so you could go to California no, to see another no. woman? What was that? Wait a minute, back up again? And we hear from Natalie's ex, Mike. Let's get a divorce and you can go about your way and do whatever you want. I'm terribly sorry, it's time. <laughs> Look out for part two of this video, and we will see the conclusion of the single life tell-all. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye!